say goodbye to the frustration of not finding the right curriculum, and hello to effortless custom lesson plans with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an AI language model that's shockingly good at understanding human language and responding like a real person, thanks to its training on a ton of data. That comes in handy when you can't find a curriculum that perfectly fits your family's or your child's needs. While I typically recommend purchasing quality homeschool curricula, sometimes it makes more sense to put together our own curriculum. With ChatGPT as your eager and capable research assistant, you can easily create a tailored curriculum that matches your child's learning preferences without the daunting and time-consuming task of creating it from scratch. And I want to show you how to do that. But first, let's imagine that you do have a homeschool assistant to help you create a custom lesson plan. Wouldn't that be nice? But even if you did, you couldn't just send them off and say, hey, do some research. You could, but it'd be a waste of time because you wouldn't get the information that you need. No, what you would do is define some pretty specific parameters for their research. You want to do the same thing when using ChatGPT as a research assistant. Define some parameters. For a lesson plan, the parameters would be your kids' academic objectives and possibly their learning preferences and interests. I'll link a video below where I use ChatGPT to define academic objectives. For learning preferences, I'm talking about the teaching or learning methods that spark your child's attention and the social setting that is most effective for their learning, meaning group learning, one-on-one, -on -one, or independent learning. Interest would be anything that delights them. I'll link some videos below that'll go over all of that. My personal opinion is that if the subject or academic objective that you want to create a curriculum or lesson plan for isn't a struggle for your child, and if it isn't something that they have strong feelings about one way or the other, just keep it simple and do what works for you as the homeschool parent. But if this is one of those subjects that's a struggle for your kid, definitely lean into your child's learning preferences and interests and consider them when creating your custom plan. So that's one set of parameters that you'll need to define. The other set are the academic objectives. We've discussed in the past um, offline methods of defining academic objectives, like the Core Knowledge series of books or the book Home Learning Year by Year. And I definitely recommend referring to something like that no matter what. Once you've identified academic objectives and learning preferences, ChatGPT can help you design a personalized lesson plan that is tailored to your child's individual needs and interests. It can suggest resources such as videos, books, and interactive activities that will keep your child engaged and motivated. And it can guide you in assessing your child's progress. So let's look at some examples. I want to remind you to refer to your local homeschool laws to see if there are any legal requirements that you have to consider during your lesson plan creation, uh, like particular subjects to cover, number of days of instruction, that kind of thing. I'm now in ChatGPT. Notice that I have a couple of options up here, a GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. I broke down and finally paid for the plus version of ChatGPT. That's why you see these. GPT 3.5 is available to anybody. Um, it says it's the fastest model. It's available in the free plan and also for plus users. GPT 4 is just for plus users, but this is the one I wanted to use to create this custom curriculum because it says here is the most capable model, great for tasks that require creativity and advanced reasoning. And I would say both of those are required for creating custom curriculums. So the examples that I'm about to show you, I did with GPT-4. So with GPT-3.5, you get a response from chat GPT pretty quickly. But with GPT-4, it is a bit slower, which I'm fine with. So you might need to step away from it in order to get, let's say, a full outline or a 20-day lesson plan. You might need to just kind of take a break, check your email. Do something else while that's going on, but it's worth it in order to get the best response, in my opinion. Okay, with that said, on to the examples. In this example, I'll show you how I create a custom curriculum for grammar. So first, I start off with this pretty complex prompt. Notice that I start off with defining the role. I want you to act as a homeschool curriculum advisor. And I tell I want to guide the process of creating an outline for a year-long lesson plan for a specific subject. So it goes on saying... We need to determine academic objectives and goals and mastery and understanding. There's a lot in here, which you can pause the video and read on your own. But basically, the point of it is that I want to collaborate with ChatGPT in creating a lesson plan. This is also the place that you can add an educational philosophy. I didn't do that here, but you could say, 
I want you to act as a classical homeschool curriculum advisor, as a Charlotte Mason homeschool curriculum advisor, something along those lines. That way you get exactly what you want. You could also add something about your child's interest, but I wouldn't do that here. I'll show you further along in this example how you can integrate your child's interest into this lesson plan, but I wouldn't do that here. Otherwise, the whole lesson plan will be about that one interest, and that may be too much. So then I got a response from ChatGPT saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to determine academic objectives, design an outline for your long homeschool lesson plan, incorporate some creative teaching methods. They point out hands-on activities, literature suggestions, and multimedia resources. If you wanted something else here, let's say specifically an art project, you could say that here. Say, focus a hands-on activities on art projects. But... I just left this as was. It was good enough to me. And then I just asked ChatGPT for a lesson plan for grammar for a fourth grader. So it's important to include the subject and the grade. ChatGPT responded, again, with the academic objectives and goals. And then we have the outline. In this year-long outline, ChatGPT gave me seven topics, which we could focus on as seven units. And then you can make each unit last as long as you want. Some of these units have more information in them than others. For example, the first two units, you might want them to be a month long or a month and a half long each. And then these other units may be just two weeks. So think about that as you look at this. Also, these are basically the academic objectives. If you don't like these, what you could do is before you do this first complex prompt, do as I shared in my previous ChatGPT videos where you load up the chat with having ChatGPT determine academic objectives for a particular subject and grade. And then after that, use this prompt. Could also just tell ChatGPT, change the outline in this way, maybe have parts of speech first. And that's probably what I would do in this situation. Once you have the outline the way you want it, you can then continue with the lesson plan. So I want each of these seven units to be about a month long, which will be about 20 lessons for the month. So I tell ChatGPT to create an outline for 20 homeschool lesson plans for item one. Item one is the sentence structure unit. So since I just continued the chat, I don't need to go into details about that. I can just say item one. I did regenerate a couple of times. I'll show you the first thing that I got from ChatGPT. A basic lesson plan. We see here lessons one through 20. Each lesson has a title, which I like, and then has an activity, an assessment, and then a third thing, an online resource or a literature suggestion, multimedia suggestion. But it doesn't give many specific suggestions. So it does say a brain pop video, but there's not a link. So I'd have to go find that video. It does say uh, read a short story, identify simple sentences, but it doesn't give me a suggestion for a short story. You know, in that case, you could just grab a picture book off the shelf. But it would be nice to have a suggestion. It says here, uh, study.com video on compound sentences. I would have to go find that. It does say here excerpts from Charlotte's Web to find compound sentences. So I, I just think it's interesting that it didn't give me literature suggestions for everything. I'd rather it do all that work for me because that's the stuff that ChatGPT is good at. I have three kids, all in different grades, two with special needs. And yeah, I could do the work of looking up all of these suggestions and finding specific links of finding how to do each of these activities, build a sentence game using word cards. I could probably come up with something, but when you're talking about doing this for every lesson for a student for one subject and you have other students that you are also teaching, that's a lot. And so I really want to use ChatGPT to do the hard work on the things that it's good at. So I did regenerate a couple times and I saw I, I do like this formatting better. I do have a link here, a suggestion for the frog and toad books. I, I love frog and toad. I regenerated again and I really like this formatting. I like these really complete lesson titles so that I really know what's going on. But again, I, I don't have all those specifics that I want. So I asked ChatGPT to update this lesson plan with links to online resources. So it did. It said, okay, fine. For each of these lessons, you could use this specific resource. And we have here links. Now, it does give the disclaimer. And this is something I've told you in the past, but here's ChatGPT telling us specifically. 
It says, please note that while these resources were valid and active as of my last training data in September 2021, it's always a good idea to double check them for their current status and relevance. So all of these links are not going to be good because a lot has changed since 2021. If I click on some of these links, and I did previously just to save time, I'm not going to now, but this link was correct. The Starfalls Learn to Read link was correct. But I want to say the subjects and predicates game, it did take me to softschools.com, but there was something else at that link now for some reason, or it, it gave me something different than what I was expecting. That is helpful, but I wish I had integrated it into the lesson plan. If I regenerate, we see here, okay, it did a better job of integrating those links into uh, the lesson plan, but then the lesson plan, I believe, looked a little bit different. And here I regenerate a third time, and it just gave me, again, the links and their corresponding lessons. So I asked ChatGPT to update the lesson plan with links to the online resources, including all the other information as well. I discovered later on that really the best way to say it was to say, please integrate the links into the lesson plan. So that's what it did. This is more what I wanted. So I could just copy and paste it into a document and save it for use as I plan for the school year. I said, okay, now include links for videos, integrating them into the lesson plan. So we have the lesson plan with now the online resource and video link. And I think it's better to have more information than you think you're going to need, more resources than you think you're going to need. Because I've been in many situations with my kids where I try to explain, let's say, a concept to them and they're not understanding it quite. So then I'm like, okay, hold on, let me see if I can find a video. And I go and look for the video. And that takes more time than I expect it to take. And then we get distracted with other things. And then sometimes they still don't get it. And I don't think to go look for an online resource. And so if all of this information is there for you up front, you use just what you need. Maybe you can introduce the concept to your child, watch a video, and, and then do the activity. And that's all you need. You don't need to do the online resource. Or maybe you do the online resource instead and don't watch the video. You have to use your judgment. I will say always watch videos ahead of time because a lot of these are YouTube videos. There's some crazy stuff on YouTube, but it is helpful to have all of this information at your fingertips when you're sitting down to do a lesson. All right. So then I said now include specific literature suggestions. And now this is a really good looking lesson plan at this point because we have an activity, a video to watch, an online resource, a literature suggestion, an idea for an assessment. Very nice. Notice it only gives you through lesson seven. And then after lesson eight, it says and so forth for the subsequent lessons. And you'll find that ChatGPT does this sometimes because it is a lot of information it gives you. There is a limit to how much in one prompt how much information ChatGPT will process and communicate to you, which has to do with a, a few different things, which we won't go into here, but that's okay. You can just say, hey, can you please continue with lessons 8 through 12, maybe? And, and then ChatGPT will continue for you, or it should anyway. Always has in my experience. All right, so now I say, okay, I want instructions for activity for lesson two. And it was a sentence building was flashcards. I don't want to have to come up with that on my own. I know I could. I just don't want to. I'm busy. I got several kids and lots to do, and I don't want to spend all my time coming up with a game for all of these activities. So ChatGPT gave me more than I expected, a very detailed explanation of how to do this activity with materials and instructions and ideas for things to write down. So this is really nice. You could also probably go to a teacher supply store and go to the language arts section and find some ready-to-go activities like this that you can purchase. So you can go do that if you have money to burn, or you could just pull out some index cards and follow instructions for how to do this game with your kids. So then I continued on with lesson three, gave me a very detailed description of this game and, and even more information, literature integration, an extension. Really nice. I think this is thanks to using uh, GPT-4 that has given so much information. At this point, I noticed that when ChatGPT gave me that lesson plan, it didn't actually include lesson three. And so I told ChatGPT, which is what's really nice about chatbot, that you can have this conversation. And ChatGPT apologized to me. I love me a ChatGPT apology. I apologize for that oversight. I loved it. So it gave me the complete outline for lesson three 
with the activity. So notice I didn't ask for the activity right here, but it knew that's what I was wanting. It anticipated that request and included the activity in with lesson three, which is really what I would want. So you can take this information that is giving you the outline for the whole year, the outline for a unit, all of these activities, and copy and paste it into a document to save as your curriculum, your homemade curriculum for grammar for your student. There is a copy little button here. I don't like it. It copies it, I guess, in plain text format. It, it just ends up looking funny. But you can try it out, copy it and paste it into a Word document or whatever, the word processor of your choice. What I prefer to do is just to select it here. I just select the whole thing and copy it, paste it into a document, and then you can format that document the way that you'd like. So I promise we talk about incorporating your child's interests into your homemade curriculum. So we're going to do that now with Minecraft. My students love Minecraft. So I asked ChatGPT to update the complete lesson plan to incentivize a student that loves Minecraft but hates working on grammar. And ChatGPT seemed to really agree with me, <laughs> said, absolutely, let's take advantage of the student's passion for Minecraft and integrate it into the lesson plan to make learning grammar more engaging and relevant. Really made me feel good. I guess I'm just a simple woman. So then starting with lesson one, introduction to sentences. So it's the same outline, but it includes this Minecraft activity. In this situation, it's suggesting to watch a Minecraft Let's Play video. It doesn't have the link to the video, but when you go and Google it, you'll find a YouTube creator has a channel where he has these Let's Play videos where you go in and basically watch them play Minecraft. My kids used to love videos like this, but again, always watch a complete video to make sure there's nothing weird and unexpected in there that you wouldn't want your kids to watch to make sure that it's a video that's geared for your student's age and that aligns with your values. So always do that. But in this suggestion, it's saying go find one of these Let's Play videos and then watch snippets of the video and then create sentences describing what characters are doing. Go in the Minecraft game yourselves, do some of these different actions, mining, building, crafting, and then have the student create sentences about all of that. So you can see how a student who hates grammar, hates language related activities. I've got a couple of those students in my house who really gives you a hard time even just finishing what you feel like should be a short lesson and then doesn't seem to grasp the concepts of the, of the lesson. How doing something like this, if they love Minecraft, how that could be much more fun and engaging for them and really make them actually want to do a grammar lesson with you. I will say that this activity would take longer than you expect. They're going to want to watch the whole video. Just be forewarned. You could use it as an incentive of, okay, we'll watch some video snippets and complete this grammar activity. And then when we're done, you can watch the rest of the video, a video that you've previewed. So that might get them to cooperate with you on this grammar lesson, but it will take longer to complete this activity. So this is why I'm saying. When you create your homemade curriculum, start off without this special interest. Just get that basic outline for the year and then for each unit. And then after you have that, ask for ideas for incorporating your kids' interests. And then you can pick and choose what lessons you want to use. You could start off a unit with a couple of activities geared to your child's interests. Or maybe only on Mondays, maybe every few lessons, maybe on a fun Friday, you could pick and choose which ones you want to use and then do the basic activities that were suggested in the main lesson plan. So look for the interest-led activities after you have your basic curriculum outline. But what if... Instead of doing something like grammar, where there's already understood building blocks to a mastery of grammar, what if instead of doing that, you want to define your own units? For example, let's say for social studies, you want to do a unit on elections and then flesh out the rest of the school year with other units that you define related to elections or presidents. 
So let's see how we would go about doing that. I think this is the same prompt as I used in the past. This time around, ChatGPT said, okay, great. Here's an example of how I'd go about doing this. And it gave me an example for history, the Renaissance period for a high school student, which is interesting. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So let's now create 20 homeschool lesson plans about U.S. presidential elections, combining fourth and sixth grade students. So I'm asking for 20 homeschool lesson plans about U.S. presidential elections. And so it gives me an outline. So it starts off with an introduction, basics of the U.S. government structure, historical perspective, the role of the Electoral College. So you can see there's a lot of interesting information here, but it seems a little bit advanced to me. So then I updated the prompt and said, okay, yeah, create those 20 homeschool lesson plans for fourth and sixth grade students, but each lesson should be 20 minutes long and include objectives, materials, needed activities, literature suggestions, and assessment strategies. I feel like limiting the time helps us to not go too much in depth into each of these topics, even though maybe for an older student, that would be more appropriate. And so we do get more information now about each lesson. And so looking at it, this looks like it would be pretty good. And so that's how I would go about doing that. Very similar to when I was creating that grammar curriculum, I could tell it to update this for younger students. I could say integrate videos, suggestions, and literature suggestions, online resources. I could ask for a more detailed description of how could I go about comparing and contrasting party principles, that kind of thing, and define that unit and then move on to the next unit. Maybe choose the first president, George Washington, and create a unit in a very similar way for him. We will cover unit studies in a later video and go in a little more in depth into creating a unit studies and associated activities. But for just creating that basic curriculum, you can see how this would be really helpful and save a lot of time. There is still work and thought required by the parent, of course, and your own good judgment about whether this, for example, would be appropriate for a fourth grader and whether the specific literature suggestions would work for your kids and for your family as a whole. So there is work and your own good judgment and thinking involved. But it could save a whole lot of time, make learning more interesting for you and your family, and allow you to cover exactly, exactly what you want to cover in exactly the way you want to cover it. Being able to easily create your own custom curriculum is a game changer as a homeschooler. But personalized book lists may be even more impactful because sometimes we need a little help in getting our kids to read. I'll show you how to do that in my next ChatGPT video. So I'll see you there.